Yo, I'm going to make this super quick intro. Not much to say besides I got, obviously, Bill Bilotti here on the podcast today. I know it's been a while. This is a great episode. Um, He has been a part of Detroit Hardcore for a very long time. He's put in his time, paid his dues. He's a photographer. Um, He has been doing... A a uh, it's like a foundation he runs, um, the hardcore care thing, H- hardcore cares. Um, it's just him, you know, and other people. They 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 uh, like to book shows and have a bunch of cool ass bands play. Everybody join together for a certain cause, and at the end, well, at the beginning, I guess they pick a foundation that they are going to donate uh, the money to for you know research and support and uh, whatever else. And this year, they picked uh, the Lupus Foundation of Michigan because, uh, as we talk about in the episode, Bill's wife is currently um, has been diagnosed with uh, lupus for uh, quite a while now. There's uh, no cure for it. Um, sometimes it's Debilita- debilitating other days it's it, it's fine and you know nothing's going on but it's fucking hit or miss with the uh disease and uh there's not really much known about it so anybody who is interested he's up uh, the show's booked it's happening it's gonna be f- march 11th at uh parts and labor bar in woodhaven um there's a bunch of bands playing we got Poison Tongues, Detroit Hardcore, motherfucker. Uh, Re- X, Represent X, or Represent whatever you want to say. They're from Pennsylvania. Uh, Long time straight edge band, Tough as Nails. They've been bringing the heat for a good 15 years plus now. Um, I remember seeing them back in the day, 05, 06, 07. They always uh, fuck shit up. Doubt It is playing, Detroit Stand the fuck up for Doubt It. I had them on the podcast. The last one I put out two months ago, they they did it. Um, It's going to be great. Dive Bomb. They're from Mansfield. For whatever fucking reason, I thought they were from Boston. And I say that in the episode. I'm like, oh, yeah, they're from Boston, right? I don't know what the fuck I was looking at. I I thought I seen a Dive Bomb. Uh, um, oh, I don't know why. I'm looking right now. It says a Dive Bomb HC is their Instagram. I thought it was Dive Bomb BHC. That's where I fucked up. Sorry for them, guys. Uh, but they're fucking great music. You can find them on Bandcamp, uh, Spotify. For sure check them out. For sure check that band out. They're uh, fucking groovy, man. They sound real good. Um, great riffs. Great uh, vocalist. It doesn't get much better. Um, a super Devil, as in Bill's words, some old Detroit crusties. They've... Uh, some good rock and roll, good rock and roll, um, and uh, Dead Wrong, they, we talk about this all in the fucking podcast, so if you want to get your history on these bands, you can, so um, check it all out, it's a great podcast, we talk about addiction and alcoholism and um, pit bulls, you know, because that's our love, we got pit bulls, we love pit bulls, uh, he's done a lot of rescue shit with dogs, um, uh, specifically pit bulls, so Nothing but good things. All around positive guy. He's a great photographer. And I also wanted to say, if you or you know anybody who is suffering from addiction or alcoholism, uh, know that there are people out there who have gone through it, who have uh, dealt with it, are still dealing with it, still recovering, still addicted, fighting the good fight. Um, If there's anybody out there who needs anybody to talk to or they feel like, uh, they're alone. Just know you're not. There's f- plenty of people out here that are willing to take the time that will uh, be there for you and uh, help guide you through it if you need just somebody to talk to or um, direction to uh, any sort of sobriety. Uh, we're all out here. A lot of people have been through it. A lot of people get through it. So step the fuck up and take care of what you got to take care of. On to the show. Once again, Bill's great. It was a fun conversation. Um, Lots of shows coming up. Get your tied down passes. There ain't much left. Uh, Fucking Zabalba, Earth Crisis, uh, Missing Link, 
just all got added to it. It's going to be crazy. I don't know how many people uh, the uh, Russell Industrial Center can hold, but it's got to be at least 1,000, maybe 2,000. But if it's almost sold out, yo, it's going to be busy as fuck. So get your passes uh, before they're gone because they're going to be gone. The pre-show sold the fuck out. There's a tsunami coming up here at the end of the month. Oh, shit. Lots going on. Check out uh, the show. Support local bands. And um, please come to the show next Saturday at Parts and Labor. It's going to be great. Doors are at six thirty. Fifteen bucks. It's going to It's a great, great fucking benefit. Uh, there'll be raffles, hopefully. They got good food there. So, come on. You got, you, you got nothing better to do. It's the middle of March. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? It's still getting dark out early. Show up, motherfuckers. Have a great night. Have a great weekend. And uh, you'll be reminded. Show up next Saturday. See ya. You hear the squeaking chair. And it's always, always, uh... <laughs> A great content, the screech and the my fat ass sitting down in the fucking chair. So, uh, so thank you for coming by, Bill. Um, I mean, for anybody who knows you, they know you've probably been around a super long time. I I really don't have any uh, timeline, but I've heard uh, you talk a couple times about back in the day and this and that. Um, but obviously, if Detroit hardcore has been around a long time. Um, when did you show up? How did you get into hardcore? My, my introduction, my introduction to hardcore was really um, around 1987, and the the band that really to go back a little bit, I was I was a metal kid, so like junior high, you know, 12, 13, I was I was like straight in metal, like Metallica, Slayer, Exodus, you know, all the all the old school metal, and then you know the big crossover that got me kind of going towards the punk and the hardcore was DRI. Because DRI, DRI was that crossover thrash punk, you know, and um, but the band that really got me into hardcore and punk, um, and I still remember it vividly. I was uh, uh, 1987, and I was at my friend John's house, and we were he had a launch ramp out in front of his house, and um, my friend uh, drove in his car, and Negative Approach was playing, and it like stopped me like midair, literally the bass line for nothing came on. And I, my mom was just like, what the fuck was that? Oh, mm. oh. <laughs> You're fine, yeah. We'll say motherfucking cunt, yeah. cocksucker, anything. We're good. My, my, <laughs> my, my mom was just like, what the fuck was that? And so I went over to the car and, and found out who it was. And and uh, Negative Approach was really the band that got me, you know, into that into the, into that culture and into that scene. You know, that was really <coughs> the band that... Um, solidified it for me and from that point going forward i just you know i mean back then there was the graystone the latin quarter um of course blondies todd's you know all that's where a lot of the uh punk and hardcore shows were back then a little bit later i think it was like 94 i think the falcon club came around it was this old it was a school converted into a like a concert venue oh that's cool so it was it was pretty cool um but that's really so what like 1987 1987. <laughs> That's the yeah, year I was fuck, born, man. Fuck, That's the fuck, year I was born. That's so funny, though. Well, back to, I mean, <coughs> excuse me. Fuck. Uh, next week I turn 50, so. Well, congratulations! You'll make it to 50. Exactly, and that's the way I feel. You know, a lot of people, when they when they you know when they get around their 50s, they start you know feeling you know oh my god, and to me it's almost like a, a celebration because I was I was never including me. I was never nobody ever thought I was going to make 30. Sure. So to be 50. It's like a just accomplishment. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, it is, especially with all the people you know that we know or 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 you've known. How many people have you lost at eighteen, twenty, today, twenty-five, thirty? Today, my my friend Jay, he's tattooed right here, Merkel. Um, oh, he died in nineteen ninety-eight. You know, and Shit. Uh, you know, so and and that was that was a rough time. That was a rough time for me because that was like the first time I tried to get sober, and I think I was actually three years sober and. And he passed, and I, that that's that's not what sent me back out. I know that now. I know now that his death is not what sent me out. I chose to use it as an excuse to go back out and drink. Sure. You know, but um, it was just, you know, so many people that were, you know, that were, so many people that are gone that contributed so much to what we're experiencing today. 
you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And there, there are so many influential people that are no longer with us, but they were so much a part of the uh, integration of building the foundation of Detroit hardcore. You know, so that, that's the thing to remember too, not just, you know, who we've lost, but what their contributions were. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Like, it's fucking, it's crazy because those people, you know, they kind of fade out sometimes, you know, over the years with, uh, with the scene changing and different people and other people leaving and the stories not being passed along. Yeah. It's only a handful of, of people who are actually fucking remembered, but. Yeah. And, handle. you know, that's the thing too, you know, h- hardcore, um, and I think, you know, Vinny, uh, Stigma said it, you know, uh, I was watching a documentary with him in it, and, you know, one of the questions they asked, one of the, the people doing the documentary asked him, you know, and, and, it, and it was posed for, to get a certain response. I, they weren't, like, needling him, but, mm-hmm. you know, don't you think you're a little bit too old to be, you know, still doing this? What the fuck? And Vinny Stigma, uh, I, I don't want to say verbatim, but he was like, how do you grow out of a culture? How do you, you know, how do you grow out of a way of life? You know, to so to some people it is a way of life, and and I don't, uh, I think to some people it's not, which is fine. Sure. You know? um, yeah, it could yeah. be an escape or like a safe place, you exactly. know, people exactly. to get, or or just a hobby thing once a month to get the fuck out of the house. Exactly. You know, you know yeah. some people may just like the music. Maybe sure. it's not ingrained in them that deeply that it's as much a part of their everyday life. You know, and those are the you know those are the people you know you know kind of like myself where hardcore is more than just. To me, the music is a byproduct of the culture, the scene, and that's why, it, you know, you go to different parts of the world. You go to California, you go to, you know, Texas. I didn't know a lot about Texas hardcore until I moved there. Mm. You know what I mean? And so then I, I, I met, you know, some of the, you know, influential people like um, down there, and I learned a lot more about it. You know, I mean, I was always big on like Will to Live and Die Young, um, you know, bands like that. And, uh, but I didn't know much about the culture, sure. you know, of that hardcore, you know, and, and what went into making it. Because that's my thing. When I go to these different parts of the world and I meet all these different people, you know, I, I, I love meeting the individual people. But I also want to know, like, what what made your scene? What drives your scene? What, what you know... How do you, you know, how did how did it come about? Tell me about the foundation. Who brought it there? Yeah, yeah, tell, <laughs> yeah that's me, interesting you know, too. Was it, you know, like 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 Houston hardcore was kind of a, a derivative of like uh, San Antonio Corpus Christi, and then, you know, it all just kind of mingled in all these different flavors. It's kind of like making jambalaya. Sure, you know, there's all these different ingredients, and they, you know, and and it goes in. That's those are the things I want to know. I want to know like all the different ingredients, and you know. Um, you know different scenes like new york you know where you know in new york's kind of you know a mecca to people you know what i mean it's oh like, yeah and and that's the thing you know you get that sometimes like you know uh like you know people saying that new york hardcore and in new york you know uh like they're too big for the britches you know and to me it's never a contest and, and i don't i think new york was very influential in 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 making hardcore like um scene you know, people seeing it. You yeah. Know, you know, okay. So, not yeah. not that not that we ever wanted hardcore to be like top forty or anything like that, but uh, you know they were they were huge pioneers. Sure. You know? Yeah. You know, and I, I never really get you know like too deep on on the foundations and you know the uh, uh, unity and the lifestyle mm-hmm. of the culture, but it's like for a lot of people, that's all they fucking have, and. uh Especially you talk about New York and how they were so big at one time. New York hardcore is fucking huge in you know, early 80s, late 80s, all the way up until fucking now. And uh, how how if somebody was going to say it's they're too big for their britches, like, it's like, are you just jealous? <laughs> you know, I, hater, I, you know? That's like, what I think it is sometimes. But I, t- yeah. I think that's as much a part of hardcore because... A lot of times, like I know, I know for me personally, you know, my introductions and and and, and a lot of the the time I spent on hardcore was very very fucking dysfunctional, mm-hmm. highly dysfunctional. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's fucked up. Crazy. Loyal, loyal to a fault to things that you know, to people and certain people and stuff like that. They didn't give a fuck about me. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. I know, man. But I was still loyal. Even there's been times, you know, even I've had, you know whatever issues beefs whatever you want to call it with people but it never got in the way 
you know, I would still shoot their band. I would still go to their shows. I would still, you know, when I seen them, you know, uh, shake their hand, whatever. Because to me, it was all that's that's the way I am. It's about the culture. I don't bring that shit to shows. I don't. I don't. I don't. What I call rally the troops. You know, like getting people on my side. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, guess what he said about me? I, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know? yeah I'm just here, man. Ten minutes from now, we'll be over it. Whatever the whatever it was. Sure. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, well, some people aren't like that, though. So you're yeah. you're one of a kind, kind of, because a lot of people hold grudges and they won't go to shows. Or every time I see yeah. you, I'll fucking beat your ass and type shit. That. And I that's, that shit. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's just like, it's just an ego thing. And I mean, some people just can't fuck grow out of stupid shit. And, you know, for, for some people to see that the whole time is crazy to me because I used to be the same way. Like, I'm going to hold a grudge, and every time I see you, I'm going to make sure you know I don't fucking and like you. And that was you. the big thing about it is, you know, even that was one thing, uh, I guess, that kind of like my mom instilled in me. I was never a bully. Okay. Yeah, I was never, I, I, I never went to show, really any part of my life was I ever a bully. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I had this protective instinct in me where... You know, if people messed with with anybody that I cared about or anything that was important to me, that's when the worst of me came out. Sure. You know what I mean? So the rest of the time, you know, a lot of people would say, you know, you know, you know, he's so quiet. He's so laid back. He's so reserved. You know what I mean? You know, and it's like, especially since I got sober, you know, some people that, you know, didn't know me when I used, you know, they're you know, they're like, I can't imagine you doing anything like that. And I'm like, good. That means I'm living my life right. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You you know, that, yeah. that you don't see that behavior. Because to me, that's the biggest part of my sobriety is not so much the drinking and drugging, but my behavior. I had, I found, when I, when I got sober, I realized that the drinking and the drugs were a tenth of the actual, the, the issue I had was I refused to learn how to live. You know, I, I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to grow up. I didn't want to, uh, uh, live like an adult. I had to grow up in public, you know? Yeah, yeah. man. No, I, I, I can relate, you know, I've had my own addiction issues back in the early two thousands. Um, with coke and shit like alcohol was also fueled you know it was all all the fun shit you know when you're in that fucking mindset i guess but um yeah it's it's hard let me ask you this question how did you how did you come to terms with like you had an addiction you know uh Um, alcoholism or whatever else you were doing we doing drugs too yeah, I, I I mostly drank. Like once in a while, I would do some some coke or something like that. Okay. I I, I really you know like uh, marijuana, acid, all that stuff. I stopped when I was <laughs> like seventeen, eighteen years old. Oh, okay. It's just I, I didn't want it. You know. Sure. That's just not the not what I was after. I was definitely I was a hundred percent alcoholic, and and then you know if I was on like a two three day, two three day binge and started falling, I'd you know do some coke. Yeah, you know, and I would, I would only, I would do the coke to pick me back up so I could drink some more. Oh yeah, you know what I mean? so it, it will do that. It, yeah, it worked. Yeah. It, 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 it worked. Like for me another sixteen hours in because me. because yeah. I wasn't a habitual user. Okay, you know what I mean. I was yeah. just using it when I needed to pick me up to start drinking. Yeah, I'd wipe that slate. You know what I mean. That so slate I could, clean. I get like a, a gram or two, and I'm good. <laughs> I'm, you know what I mean. I didn't Ugh. need a need a whole lot. So. Fuck, when I think about it still, it makes my stomach fucking turn. It wasn't, it wasn't, it actually wasn't difficult to come with, come to terms with the fact I was an alcoholic. You already knew? <laughs> I already knew. And yeah. then it became like that sick joke. Like, yeah, I'm an alcoholic, you know, and, or like, you know, growing up, you know, I always tell people I'm a, I'm a recovering Catholic too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, because I grew up and from the time I was like, could walk, you know, I'm going sure. to hell. I'm going to hell for everything I'm doing. So I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I, I was of the mindset that, it, well, if I'm going to hell, then I'm going to get good seats, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. So, so, so are you like, a, were you like a blackout drunk, like, yes. or, you know, That's bad right. behavior and acting crazy? The first time I ever drank on my own, outside of like, you know, sipping grandpa's, you know, the drinking the beer off the top of the she, she, she wasn't a social thing you were no the chilling. first time i drank was i was 13 years old and just everything from start to finish i mean having to figure out how to get the alcohol you know and then i'm, I'm driving around what i did is i had a hoodie on and my skateboard and i was on a honda spree and <laughs> nice. so I, I i found a buyer and uh, i put the case of beer in my hoodie put it on my skateboard and like put my feet on it so it was on like the the, uh, oh, the footboard, the footboard of a, <laughs> of oh, was a, it a red spring? Was it red? No, it was black. Okay, it was black. But you know, so 
just the whole thing of how to get the beer. Then I got to the party, and I think the the party was like five blocks from my house, and yeah. I couldn't even find my way home. Ooh. And that was like the, that was the first time I ever like, made a decision on my own. I'm going to go drink. Mm-hmm. You know, so no, it was never a social thing for me. Oh, wow. was, I was a blackout drunk right. for the first time. Just so. get fucked up as <laughs> quick as possible. Yeah, yeah, that was the thing too for me. Like I felt like. Uh, when I started drinking, I was actually just thinking about this the other day. It was on, on my 16th birthday, you know, all my, all my real cool friends, you know, like, yeah, it's time to get drunk because all my friends already like, drank and, like, and did pills and shit before me. I smoked a little weed, you know, but um, it was like, yeah, your 16th birthday, it's a big deal, right? You know, somehow we got a buyer, I don't know who bought, but we got a few 40s of Milwaukee's best ice, oh, you know, you probably like six 40s between like four people and a, a fifth of a fucking five o'clock vodka, oh, dude. And geez. we were making screwdrivers, oh, you know, just some like some Tropicana orange juice and five like rubbing alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that night I fucking I broke my wrist and I woke up with a fucking with like a lump on my forehead, like two inches big. I, was like, I have no idea how that happened, but uh, but then I realized like. At the time, it was such a great time, you know. <laughs> but it's like your friends, you're like, well, let's do it again. And that's how like, I kept my friends around because I always had like a job. So yeah. it was like, uh, I'll buy all the shit if we can all just keep hanging out, you know. Yeah. So I was more of like uh, the nice guy. Like, yeah. I want to fucking, I want to hang out with these people more. So I'll buy all the fucking drugs and booze. Like, oh, what the fuck, <laughs> you know. That, Desperation that, to have friends is that weird. Was, that was one thing I learned, too, is like when I quit drinking, um, like how many people scattered. And I mean, but I mean, at first I was kind of like pissed off and bummed and all. I felt all kinds of different things. But yeah. then I realized, you know, that those people were just, they were, they were acquaintances, you know? Oh yeah. Those are, you know, those, those are those people in our lives that, you know, uh, we really can't play victim because we use them as much as they used us. Oh, fuck and, yeah. And when, when I ran out of whatever they wanted, then. You know, I was no longer important, which I get. I get now. Yeah, yeah. I don't take it personal now. No. But it's also pretty humbling when, you know, the people that remain your friends and did some of the most screwed up shit with you right next to you <laughs> are like, you know, we're glad you quit drinking. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that's the thing, too, because I'm not... <laughs> I still drink here and there. I don't. I never get like super drunk. I just. I don't want a hangover. I'm so afraid of a hangover, dude. Because they're, they're just like, ugh, they just feel terrible. It's not worth it. But uh, I feel like a few beers here and there. I like to smoke weed, but uh, fucking alcohol. Ugh. It's okay. tough. Yeah, I'll have beers. I like to. Sm- There's a small buzz, but I never get shit faced. I just can't do it. <laughs> that's what I used. Yeah, to, I have no uh, urge. I used to tell people that um, I was allergic to alcohol, and they 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 would look at me <laughs> weird, and I'd be like, yeah. I, Whenever I drink, I break out in handcuffs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Hey, you know, some people just shouldn't drink. No. That's I, a... <laughs> I'm one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You had a few friends who, like, they'd fucking piss themselves every yeah. single time. Well, or, you I, know, was just, I was just, you know. I was completely, I can't believe that, um, you know, uh, over the, the whole span of my drinking and, and, and you know, chaos. You know, I, I I think I added it up one day. I only did, I only did 183 days in jail, over all of it. I sh- so you know when when I look back on my life and things like that, I'm I'm, I'm grateful. You know, sure. You know, whatever is watching over me, the universe, whatever. You know, um, they obviously obviously had a different plan for me. Yeah, yeah, man. That's well, like I said, uh, con- I said congratulations. Do you making it to 50? Yeah. There's a lot of people who we know. Or friends of the past just like, never had a fucking chance. And some people would even think, like, we never had a chance. But somehow, like you said, something could be watching over you or yeah, whatever. It's and fucking... What I it, wasn't my, it wasn't my thinking that got me <laughs> to 50. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's ultimatums and, and sacrifices. It's it's either this or that for some people. And, you know, some people make a fucking better choice for the better for their life. They'll live longer. Uh, they will stay out of jail longer. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, 183 days is a long time. Yeah. That's like a half a year. But uh, yeah, I just, um, you know, I, I, you know, it was, and people ask me, you know, well, why, you know, what happened that you quit, you know, and I'm like, um, it, it I, I didn't quit. I, I, I remember, um, 
actually I was I think I was facing my uh, it was my last DWI and I had gotten it in Texas but the thing about Texas is they could pull all your DWIs from the last 10 years Ooh. so I could have went to prison for seven and a half years I think oh, and so I, I was checking that computer every day and they kept it first offense you know um, but that December I, I had gotten that DWI in July of 2004 and I went home in December because I had court in January and I thought for sure I was gonna I thought I was going to prison and um, so I went I came back here to Detroit for a week to kind of say goodbye to everybody yeah and um, we, I, I don't even remember the bar but we were all downtown drinking and it just quit working the alcohol quit working I tried to do some coke that didn't work nothing mm. it was like it just quit working it was finally like the universe was like okay well he's not doing it on his own and like took it away and I that was probably the most terrified you know, next the next three days I spent in my mom's basement, curled up on the couch because my defense was taken away. My boo, the booze, the drugs, the chaos was all taken away. Yeah. You know, and so I didn't. I I literally folded up and did not know how to you know live. But I ended up going back to Texas. I flew back down to Texas, went to court, um, and it was a first offense. I had to do like I had 18 months probation, and and I did everything I was supposed to. And it was weird because when I was going to get off probation, I think I was like three weeks away from getting off probation, and uh, I started to get this fear of, you know, am I doing all this shit because I'm on probation, and once I get off paper, am I going to go back to that life? And 18 years later, I'm still sober, so it was... That's awesome, man. It was, it was kind of like, you know, life was going to take the tra <laughs> training wheels off. And yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> the training wheels, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, like, uh, like, can you actually control yourself, or are you only forced yeah. to for the time? Yeah. yeah, well, hey, man, well, you made the right choice. Obviously, you may be somewhere else if you uh, <laughs> didn't stop drinking. And Fuck. That was a crazy thing. In, in uh, 99, the reason I left Detroit... Um, it was pretty much because I thought I, was, I, I, I pretty much thought I was going to end up in prison or dead in one of the two. That was probably the most chaotic period in my life from like 90, 98 to 99 was one of the most chaotic periods of my life. And because that was the crazy thing is I started drinking again and it was almost like my alcoholism was paused, meaning that, you know, the worst drunk I had before was my best drunk moving forward. It was just, it was misery. Mm. misery and I didn't but once I took that first drink I didn't know how to shut it off yeah yeah so. that's a like I said a problem for some people yeah. <laughs> fuck so well, on a more positive note you do great things um you you're a photographer uh you've uh, booked a lot of shows in the past um and the other thing that's another reason why you're on is because we want to talk about the show that you have uh booked for the Hardcore Cares yeah. Um, all the money is going to be donated to the Lupus Foundation yep. of Michigan. Um, We've contacted them. Um, we're going to actually meet them at their, their office is like 10 minutes from my house. Oh, no shit. So we're actually going to go present the check in person instead of mailing it. So, cause they're right there. So. Oh, that's cool. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, um, and is there, I mean, I know, but is there a certain reason why you chose a Lupus Foundation? Well, yeah, it's the first show. I mean, it's, I think the last show we booked was 2017. So it's been, been it was late 2017 yeah. and it was actually in baltimore okay. I, th I think the last show we actually booked was actually for tad um the lead singer of stout um baltimore hardcore and at that time he was going through cancer so mm. it was to kind of help him with some uh, you know keeping up with the medical bills yeah, a little relief and stuff like that. very little relief and that's the that's the yeah. that's the thing about it is let me back up a little bit a little bit of history on it 2013 is when um hardcore care started and it, um, it, it's actually me and my really good friend in Baltimore, Eric. Um, and at that time, I was running Detroit Bully Corps, and he was running Baltimore Bully Crew, both, you know, pit bull-based um, um, humane organizations. But the more and more we started talking, the more and more we realized how many parallels we had. You know, both street kids, hardcore, the punk, skateboarding, all these. We had all these parallels, plus the dogs, plus what we were doing. And it was just something we started doing so we could, you know, um, share our love for music and the culture, but that at the same time also do something positive. Uh, and I know the, the first shoot 
first few shows we did were all animal based because it's what we knew. Mm -hmm. But then we started branching out. I know one of them we did for like a, a, a woman's shelter, um, medical costs, you know, different things. We started branching out. Um, and so this one is, is really important to me because this is the first show we've booked in five years. So it's it's huge. It's huge to me. You know, yeah, man, for sure. It. And I did, I put that one uh, post up with all the flyers from all the shows that we did. And, and I mean, look, we did 15 shows. And, and uh, some of it wasn't even all, like, we did, those were all the shows. But then we also had so much support. Um, you know, sometimes people couldn't play a show. You know, Wisdom and Change was always very giving, letting, letting us use their music or letting us use some of their graphics, you know. Oh, cool. Different bands would let us use music for some of our promo videos. Mm -hmm. and, or, you know, spread the word. Uh, Chris from Reverb um, uh, let us come there. Like one time we set up, sold merch and everything like that. Um, we did a, a we, I know we did one for uh, Carl from Strength, uh, Strength for a Reason. He oh, was okay. Going, he, was, he, he was going through some medical stuff and, you know, we, we sold, you know, shirts to kind of help him, you know. So it was just, it was just something that we could do that kept us, you know, part of our hardcore family, but we were also able to do good with it. You know what I mean? Um, so this one is, is lupus, and um, I let my wife pick it. My, my, my wife, uh, Nicole, has lupus, and she has uh, the ETS form of lupus. So, I mean, it, it's attacking her at every corner. It attacks her, it attacks her organs. It attacks her ligaments, um, her hands, everything like that. So, um, but then she also has an offshoot, which is... Uh, I can never say this word. <laughs> scleroderma. Oh, S scleroderma. Okay. Um, which is uh, kind of it, it takes it kind of takes what lupus is already doing to her ligaments and intensifies it, like okay. magnifies it. Yeah, I don't even know. I should do a little research, I guess. But well, I don't. Lupus. Yeah. It, it's an autoimmune disease, um, and um, so there's there's not a lot of there's not a lot known about autoimmune diseases. There's I think she actually, she had it for like 14 years before she was even diagnosed. I think mm. she got diagnosed nine years ago, you know, because it just wasn't a lot known about it. And when you look at somebody with lupus, a lot of times there's no, it's not, it's not like cancer or something like that where there's all these visible signs. You know what I mean? People can look at somebody with lupus and say, well, you look fine to me. You know what I mean? One of those things. Yeah. Okay. On the you inside. Know, and I mean, I, I mean, so, I, I, before I met my wife, I knew a few people with lupus and that I, I was one of those people. It's like, well, you, I mean, you don't look sick, you know what I mean? But I had no idea until I, I until I, I lived with it that I knew and I, now I'm like, oh my God, all these things people were saying to me, like just, you know, there's, there's just times where she's like completely fine. And then it's just, it's like a switch and she's, she goes out. You know, she's got to rest. She's got to sleep. So. Yeah. Well, fuck. Is it like totally like a? Is it like livable? Like. Yeah. I mean. Okay. There's like, no cure. You know? Okay. Like so people, you're just fucking people tortured. Will, you know, people will sometimes you know be like you know well you know how how is she doing or you know is is she gonna get better? And I'm like no, it's not something. It's just it's progressive. Okay. So you deal with it symptomatically, and um, you just kind of deal with it as it goes. You know, it affects everybody differently. Okay. Um, you know, yeah, so there's, there's no cure for it, and it's just, you know, we do, you know, and, and it's progressed, like, uh, the last, since, you know, we've been together now almost four years, and just in that four years, the amount that it's progressed, you know, mm -hmm. is, is, it's, it, <laughs> yeah, so some days it's just, like, fine, and other days yeah, it's, just like, some immobile, some days she's a champ, and then other days, you know, like, uh, it was probably about three weeks ago, she was out for a whole week. You know, I was basically having to carry her to the shower. The only Fuck, man. the only place she would get any peace was like in the shower, and we would just run the hot water tank out and then put her back in bed, mm. let, let it reheat. It was you know, so it's just you never you never know how it's going to affect her. You know, oh, that's a struggle, man. Yeah, especially not like knowing it's going to be a good day or a fucking bad day. But <clears throat> I mean, you got to be strong, man. You know, there's. It was it was something that was, it's something to, uh, that's important to her. So yeah, I figured, well, that's I good. The first show back, we'll do something familiar. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to hear about it. You know, too, because it's a great you know spread awareness where people have no idea, yeah. like like me or people say, "Well, you look fine." Like I don't know, but uh, yeah, it's it's good. You know, you can donate whatever amount you will yeah. will will help in some exactly. small way to 
either aid or I mean, look for a it, cure even or whatever. Even like pays for their website. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. So they can keep getting that in. Yeah, the awareness know? out there. You know, pays but, for their website costs for the year or something. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, something. Which is important, you know, because <laughs> the more people know, you know, the more they or, or whoever's affected by it, it, you know, just drive towards, you know, you know and I, bettering the uh, whatever medicine for it. Yeah, and it's just, it's, you know, the, the, I mean, there's so many... We probably average, you know, eight, I'm going to say eight to ten doctor's appointments per month, you know, sometimes more. Mm. You know what I mean? Because she's got different doctors. She's got, like, her, her main lupus doctor, but then she's got uh, spine doctors that help her with the, the ligaments and stuff like that, you know, where she's got to go get injections in her hands and her back. Fuck. Things like that to help with her mobility. Um, and then, you know, then just her normal stuff, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Fuck. Oh, sounds like a pain in the ass so for it's everybody. Definitely, it's definitely... Um, you got to do it. It's definitely a, a labor of love, you know, and... A, a lot of days, it's pretty humbling to see, like, how it doesn't crush her spirit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, uh, some people will. They'll be all depressed and fucked up knowing that there may not ever be a cure or, you know, whatever else. Uh, like... Like I've seen, I've seen people with cancer who, who like they find out they have cancer, and as it it progresses, they just get more sad and down and out and depressed. And it's like, what has happened? You know, over just a couple of months, anybody can go from being fine to finding they finding out they have any sort of disease and just find out, I mean, just a shell of a person. Like my father-in-law just passed back in January. Like it was crazy. Found out in uh, July he had fucking uh, liver cancer, or sorry, not fuck lung cancer, and it's like, God. Damn, like, yeah. and it was already stage four because he had CLL, it's chronic leukemia, something. So that was kind of a uh, dormant, might be the word. I don't know. Uh, but then over the years, because this was like 10, 10 years ago or so, and then, you know, everything was all fine, you know, fucking whatever. And then, uh, remission. yeah, 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 yeah. And then it, he went to the doctor, couldn't breathe, and he had my chest pains, and they're like, well, we should probably do a scan. It's been a few years, and they're like, you're fucked, <laughs> you know? So yeah, they tried a little bit of, uh, of um, it wasn't even chemo, it was uh, immunotherapy. I forgot I forgot what it was called, but yeah, there was really no fighting chance. You know, sometimes I'd like to think it was just a fucking money grab, you know, yeah. for them to, like, well, we can try. Like, well, how many thousands of people have you seen that's not work on? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> you know, so, you know, you hope for, for, for the best, but and not everybody makes it through with cancer. But, uh, I was, uh, I, w- I was pretty, um, meticulous to, um, how I engineered the lineup for this show, too, because I wanted, yeah, I wanted, I wanted great segue. Let's change this yeah. sad subject. <laughs> the way I engineered it is I wanted bands from, you know, all the different, you know, age groups. I wanted some of the young, I wanted younger bands. I wanted, you know, bands that are in their, you know, mid thirties and, and then, you know, some of the older guys, because that, that's always my, that's always my mission is to, uh, you know, bring people together as opposed to driving wedges, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And I think there's so many different ways that we can drive wedges, you know, being, just being human, you know, um, like so many of us have, you know, we live different lifestyles when we're, you know, we're out, out in our life, you know, whether it's straight edge, vegan, you know, our, our different sexualities, different orientations. And that's all, you know, to me, that those are the, like me, I don't drink anymore. That's a personal choice I made for myself. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't hold that over anybody's head. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the thing is I'll never, ever use my personal choices to drive a wedge you know, when it comes to hardcore or anywhere in my life, you know, uh, those are things I did to better my life. If somebody's straight edge because it betters their life, I love it, you know, or vegan or, or whatever choice you're making for your personal life, you know, it's when we start using those as like wedges to like, you know, push ourselves away from people or, you know, create these segregated groups inside of hardcore. That's when I start to have an issue. So I'm always trying to work, you know, the opposite of that. Mm-hmm. You know, I want I wanted everybody, you know, represented. I wanted I wanted to draw in a crowd that had, you know, all of it. 
the young the young guys coming up you know young people you know coming up because and that's that's what i'm i'm liking too i'm you know seeing like a lot more uh females you know coming to shows or in so the many more yeah for sure and it's great you know i love it you know um and so I just, that's what I mean. I want that diverse crowd where, you know, because to me, when we're, when we're at these shows, you know, it's like the great equalizer. We're all there for the same reason, you know, to, you know, to support hardcore, to support, you know, the culture and everything we're trying to accomplish. And, you know, that was my mission when I engineered this lineup. You know, um, yeah. How'd you go about it? You got, so let me just, I don't have the list, but, uh, dive bomb. They're from Boston, right? No, Dive Bomb's actually from, uh, um, they're not, it, Mansfield, sorry, it's by Cleveland. Man, oh, by Cleveland. How the hell did I think it was Boston? You don't have any bands that come from Boston, then? No, no what the fuck? How did I think that, then? But yeah, I listened to them, I found them, yeah. and uh, because I didn't, I never heard of Jive Bomb, so I thought it was them at first, because they're, they're fairly a few years old, I think, Jive Bomb, so I was like, let me look yeah. up fucking Dive Bomb. No, Dive Bomb was actually supposed to do, we, uh, I think it was like back 2016, they were supposed to, we... We're supposed to do a show in Cleveland, and I forget what happened. It never happened. Okay. So Die Bomb, but I've seen Die Bomb. Um, um, I've met them guys a few times out at um, shows out in Mansfield, and and I, I've always loved Die Bomb because of the, the the diversity of their sound. If you listen to them, it's not just like it. It's all over the place, and the timing. I love the timing because the timing's not. It's not like your usual timing. It's like, you know, it's almost like sometimes I've caught myself like. You know, music sometimes has a, a, a just a tempo to it, mm-hmm. and it's like when you try to find the tempo in their music, <laughs> that's when you get lost. You know, and that's what I love about their sound. It, they got a really div- diverse sound. I love their singer too. Yeah, and the, it definitely got a groovy, funky soul. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I exactly. do like it. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited to. You know, well, I don't know who they were until I seen the flyers. Yeah, I'm well, sorry about they're, that, they're, but uh, they're good and they're good live. Too. Yeah, yeah, and um, who else? Yeah, but, uh, you doubt it from Detroit. Yeah, uh, I met them. I met them guys yeah. at the uh, the Ten for Ten show. Oh, cool. When I met them. Yeah, you know? yeah, you shot a lot of that show, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Well, almost f- ten fucking bands you were up. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, it's a long night, <laughs> I, man. I, I was, but just being there for ten bands I sucked. Was stealing my age. <laughs> <laughs> you just being in the crowd sucked for ten bands. You know, it's just a lot. But, it's I mean, a lot for like anybody. John, their their bassist John and uh, the guitar. Um, uh, Robert Gibbons. I, I knew them guys. Yeah, already. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, they've been. Um, but the, uh, the rest of the guys I had met that night, and I just I, I, I liked their music. I liked the vibe, you know. Um, and so, you know, to me, I was just, I had a really good initial feeling. I'm not only just about the band, but the people, mm-hmm. you know, the humans. And so I, I reached out to them, and and they they jumped right on. So I was happy about that because I wanted to, and that's why I went to that ten for ten because I knew it was primarily young bands. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, I want I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of the new generation coming up. You know, I don't want to be. I'm not. I'm never going to be that stuffy old bastard. Who's like, <laughs> this ain't fucking hardcore. Yeah. Oh, dude, kids? I fucking hate that more than anything. <laughs> it's evolving. Uh, it's evolving. What happened to the sound of fucking suicidal tendencies? Like, shut the fuck up. And it's like, evolving. Yeah, evolving. yeah, yeah. Uh, there's still bands that sound like that though. Yeah. So you just gotta find them. You can't sit there and say, "Ah, oh, this isn't hardcore." Like, shut up, you old fuck. <laughs> you know. <It's> <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> and that's sometimes that's sometimes where I, you know, I guess I differ from even some of the guys my age is, you know, I guess it's my mentality of the music being a byproduct of the culture. Yeah. So to me, there's not really that, I guess, you know, black and white hardcore sound. You know sure. I mean, I, mean I, I think sometimes it can get a little crazy when we have like 87 different genres like screamo hardcore or... You know, it's like metal core, death core, exactly. shit core. <laughs> right, yeah, like, all right. You, you, I you think, know. I think sometimes it can get a little crazy. But. Yeah, you yeah, sometimes it's more of who's in the band. You know, but you, exactly. You but know, again, I don't want to. I don't yeah. want to be. I don't want to be that person. You know, who's always finding some reason to bitch. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I might do that. Sometimes, like in my head, but you know, no reason to fucking pull oh, it I out there. A lot of time. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, yeah. Um, who else? You pulled fuck X, represent X out of the oh, represent. depths of fucking Pennsylvania. Yeah, those those are some of the most solid human beings I know. And um, okay, yeah, I don't know those guys. I've seen them a couple times. Them, I actually met them. They actually played our very first hardcore care show, but with a different band called Counterfeit. Which is yeah, I remember much, them. Pretty much the same band with a different singer. 
you know, it was still Kyle um, and and a lot of the, the uh, you know, Derek and a lot of the same people. But they, Represent actually played a show for us in two, 2015. Um, so I met those guys in 2013. And we've kind of, you know, had a relationship ever mm-hmm. since. You know what I mean? So, but I picked, I, you know, I picked them, number one, because I love them as human beings. You know, yeah. and, and number two, I, I mean, I love their music. Fuck you know yeah. I mean? And um, again, I, I don't pick bands based on, like, they're, they're straight edge, you know, complete straight edge. And, and that's fine with me. I mean, mm-hmm. some of the, some of my band, some of the, my favorite bands growing up, you know, like, of course, Minor Threat and Use of Today and like, you know, uh, Champion, you know, um, a lot of straight edge bands, you know, and, and I was shit face drunk listening to them. <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, man, for sure. You know, uh, so it was like I liked same way. I liked the yeah. music. Remember Tyrant, dude? I love Tyrant. Oh, okay. <laughs> I killed you know, for straight what, edge. What was, I think it was. The, I have a beer in my hand, fucking punching yeah, people. Yeah, I think yeah. it was. Um, I think it was uh, the sick little show. I seen Dave. Dave was at. Yeah, he was there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He stood right next to me yeah. for agnostic front. He made me real nervous. He's like, "All right." He's like, "I'm about to fuck this shit up." I was like, "Please don't, Dave. I haven't seen you in a long time. You're still just as scary." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's fucking. Uh, he definitely brought the heat to the show. Is yeah. when when Tyrant was around. That's fucking but wild. But then you got like John, you know, John from Tyrant. Yeah. Um, uh, he's really a, a great human being. As yeah, well. as laid back as possible. You know, <laughs> and then you know Terry, of course. Yeah. You know, and you know all the derivatives from that, like Smash Your Enemies. And mm-hmm. That project they had. Um, Born of Hate. Uh, no, there's another one. Uh, Ad. Um, oh. A bitter, bitter PCP. PCP. Yeah, yeah. I always want to say fu- bitter actually, truth. I'm like, oh. actually went on a road trip. Poison, poison tongues and bitter PCD. We all, we all rode out to Syracuse. It was, it was. A oh good shit, that yeah, must have been a, a wild time. time. Yeah, I think I've seen uh, photos of that. Yeah. You know, on it was at a skate park. Yeah, oh, that's cool as fuck. Syracuse. Uh, f- upstate shit. Um, Super Devil. And, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Super Devil. Old crusty bastard. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. that. I love. That I, I love. I've got, seen Mark Rat and. <laughs> and uh, t- uh, Todd Pratt, you know, so I mean, you, they're definitely representing the, the old crusty bastard. <laughs> but I mean, they're all, they're, again, I can't, all the people on the show, I'm so stoked that all these people are, are on, on the show because they're all fucking human, they're all brilliant human beings. Yeah, all kind of uniting to put and a show together for a good exactly. cause. Exactly. And that's, yeah. that's when a lot of times, you know, you see the best in people. You mm-hmm. know, we can sit here and make all the judgments we want on people, but. You know, you nobody, nobody that I asked to do this show, fucking none of nobody balked. Everybody was just on it. Yes, you know yes, I mean? yes, yes, yes. So that's I feel like you know sometimes when we have a purpose and we have some you know definitive reason for doing what we're doing, especially to help people, you know, uh, I don't want to say less fortunate than us, but we're, we're going to be a part of something positive. You know, people people want to do it. People want to be good human beings. Yeah, man. You yeah, he's got to set the example and. And uh, they say, if you build it, they will come. Exactly. And, you know, you got to be, sometimes you just got to be the one to do it. Exactly. You know, uh, Dead Wrong, who's opening opening the show up. Um, uh, their lead singer, funny story, back when uh, Sanctuary used to be Paychecks and uh, Annie Up, this was way back. I feel, it was, I'm going to say like 2012, 2013, maybe. Yeah, at least a good 10 years ago. Um and Annie Up was uh, playing a show there, and I was shooting it, and uh, their lead singer, all I felt was the wind. Because <laughs> he's like, he's like six foot five. So yeah, he's enormous. When he starts windmilling, it's like fucking tree branches. <laughs> <laughs> you hear it. <laughs> and feel it. It was like, woof. <laughs> You know, so I would joke about that. But. Yeah, yeah, they were a band, and then they they kind of went on a a hiatus. Yeah. Now they're back you know, doing shit again. So, so he, that's cool. He, he had actually, um, he had actually um, uh, messaged me on my my photography page, my uh, and asked me if I had any of the old video from um, 2016 uh, from Motor City Fest, the Smash Your Enemies. Um, and that's how that whole thing started. That's how that whole conversation started. Yeah, I got hit in the head with a beer can during Smash Your Enemies at that one. That I, was a wild yeah. show. I had just walked in. I had just got to the show. I'm walking in, eh, in a good mood. <laughs> fucking missile from across the room hit me right that in the was, fucking head. That was head. the one at City Club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was weird for that to be there because I've been there on an off night. <laughs> it's definitely not a hardcore no. uh, venue. It's but, goth, uh, crazy people. 
So, but those guys, you know, it was good to good to see them the other night, mm-hmm. and you know, um, you know, get some pictures of them, get some video of them, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you did have some. Uh, sorry to. And go back to that Motor City Fest. You did have some a video on YouTube uh, when. Oh my God! Let me tell you about when the that. Alliance did it. Yeah. I had, I had, two hundred and seventy-five videos on my. It was the Hardcore Cares YouTube channel. Oh. And I had two hundred seventy-five videos on there, and um, I don't know exactly what happened, but you know, some two people had a beef that had nothing to fucking do with me, and because. You know, person A's videos were on my YouTube channel. Person B reported my fucking channel, and YouTube didn't even like send me an email. They just took my shit down. They took wow. my fucking everything. Was it copyright shit or something? No, it had oh. nothing to do with copyright. Oh my it god! It had to do with you know just some some bullshit, shit. some beef between them. Oh, okay. And this person, you know, uh, fuck. The, the truth is, I don't know what happened to my YouTube channel. I know, <laughs> I know. I know what person A and B are telling me. Okay. But I don't know exactly what. All I know is one day all my shit was gone. That sucks, dude. Yeah. I, yeah, it's I even footage. tried e- emailing. I, I never even got a response. Of course not. Yeah. Yeah. There's really. So then it was like I had to go dig through all my YouTube and old files and shit and recover as much of it as possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not like there's a court for YouTube. They're just like, fuck you. You're out. <laughs> oh, well. What are you going to do? But we were just. We're talking about another band's but. So, so what other bands we got? Yeah, Doubt It, Represent, Dive Bomb, Super Devil, Super Devil, uh, Dead Wrong, and then of course Poison Tongues. Yeah, yeah Poison Tongues. That's gonna be a good. I, I Bunch of I can, more I old crusty it. bastards. Yeah, yeah. And but uh, I mean, you got like like Jim uh, Schmo. Uh, he's probably one of the best human beings I know. Have you known him the longest out of anybody yeah. in Detroit hardcore? That's probably that's what I assumed. Uh, yeah. You know, besides, and, and, and it was even like when I came back in in 2011 and. Um, you know, it was actually Lenny, uh, the original Earth Mover, or well, yeah, BT, yeah. But uh, the the original lineup when when Lenny was in it, and um, I, I it was when I 2011 when I, when I came back. Uh, it was like I I think I would been been back in Detroit a um, a week in Terror played Terror played the Magic Stick, and um, so I was at that show and I was out on the balcony having a cigarette, and Lenny came up and uh, asked said that they wanted to do a show. Uh, a benefit show for us at that time i was you know uh doing detroit bully Corps, so that's kind of how that all got rekindled you know, oh back, yeah back in 2011 so. is that the uh, is that what tyrant's last show was that or something like that or was there a reunion where only dave sang was that one of your guys oh shows? yeah yeah they, yeah they yeah they tyrant played uh the, my very uh the very first hardcore character okay show, yeah 2013 at yeah Town tavern yeah. <laughs> i still have that video <laughs> nice I uh, used to have that video. oh fuck be fine you gotta post it there's not enough tyrant footage out there. <laughs> no, yeah, fuck, man, that was a long time ago. Yeah. It's I know, weird. It, think... It's weird. Ten years ago. Ten, but then again, it doesn't seem like that yeah. long. It was, but it wasn't. Like... No, all the all the guys, you know, Justin, um, Mike, um, and uh, Jason, they're all. I love them, but I, you know, I just. That's like the comfort band, I guess you could say. You know. Yeah, yeah, they're all solid dudes, and they're still. Still balls deep in the scene. Yeah. They're at the shows. You know they're supporting other yeah, bands, exactly. Uh, exactly. and uh, and some it's it's probably not not you know, malicious for some bands, but it's it's just some like don't like uh, cohabitate in the yeah, same yeah. room. It's just whatever yeah, they have yeah. their own different things going on. The, the what, and I understand that you know going back to kind of what we touched on earlier about you know sometimes people are here one day and gone the next, and you know everybody's lives evolve in different ways. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. The thing, you know, me personally, I just, I always made room for, for, for hardcore because people that know me know I need to have it. It, 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 It's something that has to be in my life. Otherwise I become this human being that nobody wants to be around. (laughs) You know what I mean? But that was one of the things. It was like, you know, when I got sober, I didn't know if I was going to be able to be a a part of hardcore anymore. My own fear to, you know, because I didn't drink anymore. Am I going to be able to be around all the chaos? Am I going to be able to be around? And, and, you know, I, I did, but I also figured out that when I quit drinking, I had all this fucking anxiety that I never knew because I was masking it with booze, drugs, yeah. alcohol. Oh, yeah. So a lot of times, you know, I don't know that I could go to a show to just go, you know, just go to a show. My photography keeps me connected. And what it does is it shrinks my focus. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? 
Because otherwise, I would be, you know, I, I would start hearing every conversation, <laughs> every noise. Yeah, every, yeah, just anxiety. Every piece yeah. of ice hitting a glass. So the photography allows me to change my focus long enough so that I can then be show, social and it pulls me out of the, the anxiety. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people don't know that. I, I have, like, severe you know, social anxiety. Yeah, well, you know, a lot of people do, though. And people know it. People know, like, sometimes with my anxieties and full tilt, it's like I'm done shooting, I pack my shit, and I'm, like, outside (laughs) and gone. Yeah. And people, but people know, you know, because I tell people ahead of time, you know, you know, sometimes I'm just like, I'm gone. Yeah, get the fuck know, out don't take here. it personal. Sometimes my anxiety, I'm like, I just, I got to go. Yeah, the Irish goodbye. <laughs> just come, just exactly. out. <laughs> like, see you, motherfuckers. I'm, I'm not even saying bye. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a good show. Yeah, I hope so. But we also got to give uh, props to uh, Justin, owner of Parts oh, and absolutely. Labor. Him and his venue and his bar, for great food, exactly. I, drinks. I actually like that venue. I actually, yeah. I, I, I like venues like that. I like the... Uh, Floor venues. It kind of reminds me, like back in the day, going to like the, uh, the, um, you know, uh, the twenty five hundred. <laughs> I don't know. Boy, well, yeah, no, like the, um, at the, like the Eagles halls and shit. Oh like yeah, the yeah, hall yeah. shows. Yeah, know, sure. And, like right in a hall and so just a fucking floor show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I didn't see. There wasn't a lot of hall shows when I started going to shows. Like it was just like the. Alvin's was around. There the Magic Stick was already there. there yeah, there just weren't a lot of places that were willing. To let you come fuck their shit up. <laughs> they're like, it's gonna get <laughs> fucked up. You right? might get it once, yeah. and then they're like, oh fuck. That. Yeah, I mean, you got some old vets who you get three hundred dollars to rent this hall for the night. Actually, and you tell them what you're doing. It's like absolutely not. It was actually really cool. In 2016, um, we were doing a, we did a hardcore care show in Baltimore, but we also caught Agnostic Front. Wow. And Agnostic Front played in. Um, uh, Baltimore and it was a hall show it was a floor show I, I think I posted, I, I posted they did your no your they didn't do my oh, show okay. I was, while I was in town for one of our shows mm. they were actually coming through they played Baltimore and DC and we caught both shows but the Baltimore show was actually a floor show and I posted a picture a little bit ago uh, and I think the title was when you when you actually literally support hardcore because like Roger was like on my show. <laughs> That's <laughs> Cause, funny because you know, it would be a, a floor show. So like Roger was was like on me singing. <laughs> Fuck, dude, that'd be cool yeah, to see Agnostic so, Front on the was, floor, it was man. Cool. It was good. Fuck. It was a good show. Yeah, you're the closest I ever came to that. Was that a sick of it all one when 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 the Vinny was in the middle of the pit, fucking shredding? Oh uh, man, I was never so happy in my life that just to see him, you know, rocking that. Oh my God, was he 67 awesome. now? Yeah. Something. Fucking just killing it like he's still up at twenty five. It's like this is whatever absolutely he's, whatever crazy. he's doing. He needs to, he needs to like sell his secrets. Yeah, like he, <laughs> he literally can't stop though. Because if he does, man, you know, like it's kind of like one of those, you know, like we got to keep the momentum going. People, with him. Yeah. you know, people. Um, you hear about it all the time. People um, uh, retire and six months later they're dead. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, if they don't do something. Yeah, they got to stay busy, gotta or moving, there's a fucking you know? drop dead. Yeah, especially. How much wear and tear is on yeah, Agnostic Front's get, body? You know? I mean, that's going to be me. I mean, I'm I'm always going to be some doing something. Yeah. You know, because I'm I'm kind of that way too. If I get stagnant, oh, forget yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah. I mean, you also uh, I've been talking this whole time. We touched on you shooting bands and shit. Uh, how how long have you been you know doing photography and how do you uh, how'd you get into it? Um, ever since I can remember, even like being a young kid. You know, um, I would just sit there and go through boxes and boxes. I just loved looking at pictures, mm-hmm. trying to um, uh, imagine what was going on in the picture, like what the story was. You know, so I always had this like visualization. My, my uncle, my uncle Harold, he was a photographer. He like had dark room, everything. Um, so he was an influence. Um, and then I would get, I would, I used to like shoot shows with like disposable cameras. You know? Oh wow! Um, and I, so I, I sixteen photos and shoot, toss it. <laughs> <laughs> But um, my in 1996, my parents had a house fire, and I lost so much shit. Mm. Um, but I remember it was a Lucky Strike. I think it was like it was mid 90s at some point. And Lucky Strike, whenever you would buy two packs of cigarettes, you would get a disposable black, black and white white camera. Oh wow! You know, so it was like really cool. Um, and uh, I was dating this girl in '96, and she was um, she had, she was taking photography. And so she let me come in with her. She would sneak me into her labs and taught me how to develop and all I needed, you know, to do. And that kind of that kind of really got me going. And um, I think it was like uh, 
2010 is when I switched over to digital. You know? Oh, so well after yeah. digital is already established. Yeah, it was like 2010 yeah. is when I uh, got my first digital camera. Damn. So, and I still have. I still have it. I still post pictures of it sometimes. The the Canon. I think like last week I posted one, a black and white, and that Canon, that Canon FTB. It's I still have a film camera. Mm. You know, you know, Damn. So oh. yeah, I had to get the. Uh, I had to get it uh, kind of you know maintenance. I had to get all the seals and stuff redone. But yeah, I still have and use uh, film cameras. Damn. Yeah, I did not know that. That's cool. Uh, <laughs> you ever feel like like when you're at the shows, like do you ever like cause you're always shooting? Like it seems like every time I see you, a band's playing and you're fucking, uh, you're uh, doing your thing. Like you ever feel like you're like fuck, I'm just gonna sit out and watch this band, or or do you always feel it's better to capture it rather well, than and, and enjoy that's it thing. yourself? That's, that's the thing, you know. People, you know, people are like, don't you ever just enjoy a show? But that's the thing I do. I'm, I'm seeing aspects. I'm always hearing the music. And I'm catching aspects of the show that a lot of other people aren't. Mm -hmm. It's like I've already, I've been in the pit, I've been that person on that side, now I'm on this side, catching all these other, you know, all these other elements of the music. So, I, I it's not like, I, I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. Okay, you know? cool. I, 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 I'm, I'm still absorbing all the music, I'm like... I, I'm absorbing everything now. I'm getting yeah, front row, fucking now shot I'm, too. I'm getting to absorb the music, but I'm also huge on uh, that relationship between the crowd and the band. Mm -hmm. You know, because to me that tells a story too. Sure. You know what I mean? Like I've seen some bands ten times, and like you know, sometimes the crowd is like you know ripping shit off the wall. <laughs> and then, then there might be one night where I'm just like, what what the fuck's going on? What ha what happened? Yeah. <laughs> you know no one's I mean? moving. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's really moving, <clears throat> and we got the fucking horseshoe. What's going on? <laughs> what's different today? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what's different in that equation today that last time I seen this band, these people out in the crowd were, like, tearing each other apart, and today they're just like, doo, 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 doo. <laughs> Yeah. You know, there's, like, two or three people. The hands in their pockets. Two-stepping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A good example is that was really weird. Uh, I think you were in town, but I don't know if you were at the show when uh, – Last time Madball played at the Magic Stick with Old Firm Casuals. Did you go to that show? I was on that one. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was uh, December of like 2019. It was, it was on a Sunday night, so you expect a little less oh, people. Oh, I wasn't here. I didn't come back. When was it? Uh, December of 2019. Oh, I don't know why I missed that show. Then. Yeah, Old I Firm Casuals. Got, I got back in Detroit because I was gone from like um, 2018 to uh, September of 2000, or August 2019. I came back. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. Yeah, it, like I said, it was a Sunday night, but it was... It's so weird. I've only seen them a handful of times. I know exactly what show you're talking yeah. about. Where hardly anybody went. Yeah, exactly it was, it was fucking about. strange. I was like, how's how this a Madball show? And there's like there's like four people up front. I do know what you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. You know how big the magic stick is? It's like a yeah. giant, empty exactly. fucking circle. I'm like, this is kind of sad for a Madball show. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, You know, there's one, you know, like you've gone to a bunch of This Is Hardcores. Well, at least a couple that I know of. I'm, I see you on stage taking the pictures. Uh, fuck one, I'm so jealous. I see you on the stage was when uh, Rob did the sorry White Trash Rob Rob Lynn did uh, the Blood for Blood fucking show. Man, I I was a little, I see you on the stage. I'm like you motherfucker. Was, that is that's was, glorious. Was, there. The, Two thousand. The, my first this is hardcore was 2014. Okay. And um, a couple people, you know, a couple of people that I know kind of got me back there for a couple of the bands. But uh, 2017, um, I finally got the nod from Joe, and I was so fucking humbled, you know, to be a to be just to be a part of that, and you know, so 2017, you know, I shot everything all four days, and to see how much goes into that to make it, you know, to keep all them gears greased and to make that whole show function, and and it was just it was so fucking humbling, and just to be on that stage with all those bands. And, and all the people that were affiliated with it, seeing seeing Sonny at work, he, he's he, he is he's like this beautiful, <laughs> chaotic, you know, storm of brilliance. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, you man, know, to see him fucking five to actually see what went into it. I mean, the, the dude would stand there for like a whole set, sometimes half an hour, forty five minutes, holding this camera, and I'm like, sometimes I'll like. I'll be I'll be like this, you know, <laughs> waiting for a shot to happen. I'm like, how the fuck does he hold that camera for that? Oh, uh, yeah, your arms switching and shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's amazing, man. The work he amazing. puts in, it's yeah, amazing. like he'll do fucking twelve hours all the, all the of footage, you know, four days in a row. <laughs> like, holy shit! I was actually supposed to um, 
I was actually supposed to shoot This Is Hardcore this past year. And, mm. um, but uh, uh, my wife got sick. Ah, so. yeah. Hey, do the I mean, calls. And Joe, Joe, was, Joe was super cool about it. You know, Joe was, was really, really super cool about it. But, I, I, you know, part of me was bummed because, you know, we're just coming off COVID. You mm-hmm. know? Um, so it was, it was a, a big one. Hate for you. And... Just, you know, three years. I mean, just that, you know, cabin fever and like, you know, <laughs> yeah. music starting back up. And I get to shoot This Is Hardcore, you know. But, sure. I mean, that's the thing, you know. Um, I never, I would never in a million years, you know, make my wife carry any of that. Fun, you know what I mean? No. And, and it's, 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 you know, there's going to be more shows. Mm-hmm. You know, Joe was really cool about it. I was really grateful for that. Um, and, of course, really grateful just to be, even be considered. I mean, you know. This yeah, I'm is, sure there's 150 people this, this lining is, up to this take is pictures. Hardcore, this is hardcore. didn't happen for three years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everyone's you know, like, even be, foaming at the mouth. And to even be considered for it was like one of the uh, it was a huge honor yeah it was a huge honor. you wonder how he how does he decide well, based on connections oh I don't, I don't uh, yeah I don't yeah. Know. yeah that's interesting to think about because you know there's probably dozens of people fucking I don't, I don't blown know. up as in by i, don't know, I can I, see that happening i don't know, know yeah. if it has to do with connections because uh, i mean i'm not i'm not I'm not. I'm not that cool. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, neither am I. So we're. That's why we're here. <laughs> I was just grateful. I was grateful, and you know, I was one of those people. You know, there was probably like three years straight. You know, every like, as soon as I seen any inkling, any like the first advertisement for this is hardcore, like three years in a row, I asked them, I asked them, I asked them, and then finally in 2017, I got the nod, and I was, I was just, I was so grateful. Nice. You know? Um, so. have you, uh, have you been to Edgeman Printing yet and done any sh- shows? I haven't. I'm, ho- I'm uh, definitely hoping uh, to do Tied Down this year. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to ask you next. If, uh, because yeah, I know you asked on a comment how to, you know, and I hope it all works out. And like, yeah. like, you got to keep it home first. Yeah. You know, home, and home like team. That, there's not, there's not a lot of photographers. Teams. There's not a lot of times, you know, and anybody, anybody, you know, that knows me will vouch for it. You know, nine out of the ten shows that I go to, I pay for. Yeah. You know, I'm not tell- I'm not asking people to put me on lists. No, of course not. You know, you know things like that. So, you know, but bigger stuff like you know, tied down. It's just I, I have to budget for it. You know? Sure. Like, yeah. You know, because uh, there's a big difference between like a twenty dollars show and like a hundred twenty dollars show. Yeah. <laughs> it also cuts it's into fun. your your client time. You know, on the weekend. I'm sure well, like, I'll make time. To yeah. Shoot. Well, well, I'll make well. Time to shoot. I'm gonna say you're sacrificing, but you're also paying because. Some people could be making money rather than than taking. You know, you're paying 120 dollars you know, to take pictures. You know. You, you, you know, and I think a lot of people look at it like that too. Like, I'll, I'll what, do it. 100%. What, what, what yeah. some people may not know um, is like 2019, um, February of 2019. Um, I was uh, there, my interview for Live Nation was that I, if you remember the show, it was Hate Breed, Amigo the Devil, Clutch, and. Um, um, Drop, 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 drop kick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember that, that. show. At yeah, it was at Masonic. Yeah, that, that was my interview. Oh no shit! So okay, fuck. That, it was that long ago? Yeah, I shot that show, and um, then you know they they I was out in California for a week, you know, and Damn. I was going to shoot from like Michigan to Chicago, down to like Cincinnati, I think it was, and then over to Pittsburgh. That was going to kind of be my area, and then COVID hit, fucking blew it all up. Damn, fuck. That'd have been. All up. You know, yeah, a lot of shit got my, blown up. You know, so everybody's like, "Well, why don't you? Why don't you go pursue that now?" And I'm like, "Well, my life has changed since then." Yeah, yeah. Like I, I, my life now. You know, and again, you know, it's not anything. You know, on her. You know, my life has changed. I have a wife that I can't. I can't be on the road for four days at a time. You know, I can't be traveling that much. Yeah, that's fucking. Uh, well, you know, you got to be there, and uh, and who knows? You know, times may present itself down the road. You know, whenever. But uh, Pick up something local. I'm yeah, not, you know, shit is booming right now. It's fucking yeah, exactly. thriving. Big, big shout out to you know sick of it all and be shooting that show. And Hell yeah. Play. You know, so. Oh, oh, and that's how the Life of Agony one coming yeah. too. Yeah, 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 that's that's. I'm gonna be. I feel like I'm gonna be gone that week. Yeah. When it's is that? 18th of March. March 18th. Yeah, yeah. I'll be in uh, Connecticut. I'm going to the uh, the death threat. Oh, I'm 25 okay. yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Two days for a fucking death threat, dude. Are you kidding me? I'm so excited for that. I've only seen them fucking one time. 
I think that that, that tour is coming back through um, three, uh, the 25th. It's going to be in Cleveland. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I just... And then... Yeah, because... And then... Fuck, there's a show. It's sold out at the Edgemen. Have you listened to uh, Tsunami yet? And like they're, they're like newer. It's a newer oh, hardcore band. Oh, no, no. It's a Tsunami think, with Whenever I hear Tsunami, I think of Tsunami Fest at, uh, oh, in oh, Reading. Yeah, East Coast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a band. They're from uh, the Bay Area, San Jose, I think. Okay, uh, no, I'm Tsunami. Sorry, I'm Younger fellas. About. Probably in between like 25 and like 32 maybe. Okay. And... Uh, yeah, they're fucking like stupid heavy. It's just like I really think it's like a joke band. <laughs> like it's so heavy and dumb. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, I'm almost positive that it's not a serious band. Like they just like they put out a demo and people went fucking crazy yeah. for it. So they're kind of just. I had this in my head. Like they're so big right now. Um, like they're doing like a 30 day tour, like a U.S. tour. Like so, not a lot of hardcore bands really. Do. Yeah. really do that anymore it seems i do like weeks or two yeah, weeks yeah. at a time but they're doing like a whole fucking month and uh so their last show is going to be at edgeman printing that's fine oh, okay. and it, i'm sure you've seen it, the hate five six footage of some oh, shit yeah. at edgeman yeah. oh, how yeah. fucking crazy it gets like when um drain was there back yeah. in november yeah. absolutely crazy but um d block's playing that show yeah. um fucking mh chaos and a band from uh, grand rapids um i can't remember that the name it starts with an M. I'm blanking it right now. Um, Grand Rapids is it? Bi- is it Bitter Truth? No, no, no. Starts with an M. Uh, I think it's M M. Some I can't remember the fucking band name, but uh, they're also super heavy. It's, it's just gonna be just a fucking beat down fest, and like I was saying, like it sucks. It's sold out because we knew it'd been a great show to get fucking footage. Is that the, pre- is that the pre-show? No, no. Oh, this okay. is of uh, April fifteenth. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, it's well before that. Um, I heard that pre-show sold out in like an hour or something. The, well, the tie you know, down pre-show. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, they put those tickets on sale to people who had already bought fest passes yeah, on a Wednesday. What, what then there was only like fifty left for the people on Friday. They were just gone. That's a that's a total straight edge show too. All the bands are hundred percent fucking straight I edge. I dig it. I mean, yeah, holy, it's super cool, hard, man. Hardcore to me is just that's what I mean. Like, it's edge men though, dude. To have a fucking total straight edge show there, it's yeah, fucking it's great. awesome. Yeah, dude, I'm fucking proud. So proud of those guys with Edgeman. Have you ever been to any of the tsunami fests? No, dude, I've always wanted to. I always wanted to all I went to throughout first, the years. I went to my first tsunami fest in 2013. Yeah, I've been to Reading though to Reverb oh, a couple oh, yeah. times. Oh, yeah. Oh my god, that's like my home away from home. Chris, all them guys out there. It is a great venue. And it's fucking huge. It's huge. Yeah, it's big, and, and it's just I never felt so at home. Not at home. Okay. Then, yeah, because I don't know any of those guys. Yeah. It's just... Then you know, being out there with with Chris and and you know the, all the all the guys out there is just phenomenal. It's a phenomenal experience. Yeah, it's a great environment. It's a, and it's a true example of you can get fucking say what twelve, fifteen hundred people in the same room, a bunch of goons and animals, and it's nothing. But unity. And rarely. Yeah. Rarely will you see any bullshit. And someone has to be a real <laughs> asshole, you know, to get fucking beat up there. Uh, well, you yeah, know. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> because they cut that shit out so fucking fast. Nobody wants to they, deal with they it. Have, they have uh, the security there is phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all those guys. And, and that's and, the thing. It's a, it's a good security where they're not just, you know, instantly cracking people's heads. You yeah. Know? You know, because they... Oh. They're showgoers themselves. Those are exactly. all, they're yeah. all... Steve, big Steve. Yeah, all friends, you know, so... Yeah. It, it, it's like, you, you know, it's such a small scene. Like, if you're being an asshole, someone's going to know who you are. <laughs> like, you know, it was funny. I was sitting there thinking about it, that and, you know, how you, how you said, how you asked, like, how do you think Joe, you know, picks people? And it, it made me think, because, I mean, I'm not that cool. You know, like, I'm not super connected. I mean, people know who I am, but I'm not like connected yeah i think you know joe's one of them people who just sits back and watches people and when he sees people are are, are true and devout mm-hmm. to things you know like i wasn't just trying to get on his stage for me yeah like i actually i think he watched me for a couple of years to see you know how much i loved hardcore how much you know i just covered as many shows as i could and it wasn't about me getting famous or how many likes i got sure you know because i can put up like Let's say I put up a picture of of you. I don't care how many people like it. What I really care about is if you like it. Mm-hmm. I don't care if it gets a thousand likes or a hundred likes. 
I want, you know, my, I would be happy if just the person that's in the picture or the band that's in the picture likes it. Mm-hmm. I don't care if I get, you know, how many likes, you know. It, yeah. <clears throat> you know, and like all my, all my, like Instagram, like all my followers are organic. I didn't pay for one of them. You know what I mean? I just mm-hmm. meet people. I meet people at shows. I add them. They add me. I'm never going to be someone who says, oh, here, you know, here's 300 bucks. Give me 10,000 likes. Oh, yeah. You know I mean? Yeah. Yeah. The people are like that, too. Never. There's fucking people who are, they just want that fucking exactly. dopamine. They just want that number. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. And and me and my stupid podcast, I don't give a fuck if anybody listens. Like, I'm just, I mean, you're having cool conversations exactly. with, with people who I have at least one thing in common with. And that's you know, hardcore, you know? Yeah. So it's cool, man. It's fucking, it's cool. Like, uh, so you said you moved back here in like 2018 or 19? Yeah, I was, uh, I moved to, uh, well, actually, I did, you know, the reality of the situation is, is 1999, you know, I kind of took my alcohol, alcoholism on tour. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you went around the world with it. I went out to eat. I, I was in California. I was on the East Coast. I was in Oklahoma. I was in Texas. Um, where else was I? Oregon. You know, so I was always going to hardcore shows. Yeah, sometimes, and then and then uh, and then I ended up in Texas uh, working. I was actually okay. in Texas from like 2000 to 2011, hmm. and then I came back here from 2011 to 2018, and I went back to Texas for a year and a half. And that's when I got divorced, and that's when I came back to Michigan. Oh, no shit. Because that's what I was going to do was, you know, start my photography, and and I knew I had to do something with dogs. And I knew that where I was going to be able to do that was here because I had all the resources. I had all, all the connections, all the, you know, I had built a brand, you know. Yeah. Here. So I came back here, and, you know, that's kind of where I'm at now. And then, of course, COVID hit, and I was a kick in the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, if I put everybody's <clears throat> shit you know, on hold. Like, yeah, well, yeah. I keep thinking about how how you do shit, you know, with uh, with hardcore cares. Like it's always like you can find the bands that. So the bands, they're all cool, just showing up, finding their own way here, travel. Well, I stay, mean, I, like... I always pay the traveling bands. Okay, the, band, the traveling bands always get paid. Yeah, uh, always pay the venue. Um, and you know, you, you, so and like I, I don't know how we're, if we're gonna be able to do it at Parts and Labor, but I used to always buy everybody food. Okay. You know, like pizza or whatever. Yeah. All, all the bands got food, and and I don't know if I'm gonna be, I'm gonna have to talk to Justin about that because they serve food there, and so I don't wanna, right. I don't want to be a you know. Yeah. Um. But you know you know pay the sound guy you know whatever the venue wants that's the first thing I ask what do you want yeah how much do I owe you out the door you know and then you know yeah, yeah. that's off the top right away exactly yeah. and then um you know whatever bands are traveling they always get they always get paid. Cool. You know. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was wondering. Like some bands, like, like, yeah, we can get like, gas money at least, and for sure we'll play. Which is, oh, absolutely, we're totally understandable. Yeah, like, no. and, you know, I, and I don't expect I, anybody I to show up. Them. I just, you know, I have an open dialogue, and I just ask them, "What do you need?" And don't be afraid. You know, I yeah, this is a benefit show and charity and stuff like that. But I don't want to grind people down like that all the time. And that's that was one thing we stated from the inception of uh, Herco Cares was. You know, I don't want people to say, "Oh God, here comes hardcore cares." You know, <laughs> yeah, you they're gonna try and you know, no, I'm like, make, to make, play for free, yeah. make your fucking money, yeah, make, make your money, you know, because cool, I don't want man. people to get ground down and not want to do shows with us because we're always trying to, you know, you know, break people and break people over the coals. Like, oh, it's a charity, you know, it's like, yeah, so what? <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, let let me go to the gas pump and, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, that is cool though, you know, some, you know. You want to put on a good show, but also you want to have like good bands that'll probably draw more people that will actually be more eyes on the. Uh... I've forgotten how frustrating it is too. <laughs> oh, you booking you know, shows. I mean, you have to have so many eyes going in different directions to you know, like all the different tours going on. Yeah. To what bands are, you know, it's mm-hmm. like, because you're like, oh man, what about the, oh fuck, they were just here, yeah. you know. Well, where's their show that day? Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. they were just here three months ago, or they're going to be here six month, not months from now, you know, but sometimes that can also help you, because if somebody's already got, you know, them coming through, then, you know, maybe you can, you know, sometimes book something, but, mm-hmm. you know, um, a lot of times it's just, it, 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 I, this show came together, you know, pretty pretty uh, effortlessly so i'm grateful for that nice do you have a favorite uh hardcore cares uh show oh, that you've God. done you know with the 
without you being biased or whatever towards I think, uh, I think one of the, any type of foundation. I think like my two favorite, obviously the first, the very first one here in Detroit. But then um, I think it was 2014 in Baltimore, um, and it was it was Stout, Stout headlined it. It was fucking insane. That was actually the last show that I was in the pit. <laughs> 2014, yeah. I think I had just Stout's turned, hard. So. I had just turned 40, and uh, I mean I went hard all night. I I couldn't move my arms for three days. <laughs> mm, damn. Yeah. Yeah, that one show, uh, one show I booked back in September. You were going to come, but I don't know, you, you take care of some shit that day. And uh, uh, one of the bands that played, uh, Hold My Own. Oh, yeah. They uh, did a stout cover. Oh, yeah, uh, they, what did they do? What uh, song did they do? Uh, Raise a Glass. Oh, okay. Um, Raise a Glass to the War. Is it called? And Raise a, what the fuck's the name of that song? Oh, my God. Stab, them, stab, them, stab them. <laughs> Keep it coming. I don't know the name of the song, but they did that cover. Uh, I think it's just an intro. It's on. Okay, that might be. But uh, yeah, it was cool because holding my own. Uh, do you remember the band, the Mongoloids? Yes. Yeah. Well, he's a singer of that band. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Cool. He's also a. You probably met him at this is hardcore. He does all the stage managing shit. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, for G Dog, uh, Greg. Yes. Greg Falchetto. Yeah, yes. they, yeah, 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 yeah. He's singing for that band. And then on shit, I don't know if you listen to MH Chaos or have you listened to them yet? Uh-huh. He's the also the guitarist on that band. And then Shane from The Killer yep. in Chicago. Oh, he's also on that band. Then another couple Chicago guys. Who is it? Um, uh, what, what show I just seen? Um, mm. I forget the name of the fest, but Dogs of War. They just, they oh, yeah. Them. Yeah, some crazy fest in fucking Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm hoping I'm, I'm talking to uh, Endo right now. I want to kind of get on the road with him when they go to that. Oh, that'd be cool kinda, as fuck. Yeah, you kinda, I told him let's do a, a, a little mini doc, documentary. I just <laughs> he would love it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, 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 what the fuck about a comeback home show before going to Pennsylvania? <laughs> and, uh, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> I've, been, hey, <laughs> no. I, I've been in his. I'm not afraid to say I've been in his DMs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm saying, dude. Yeah. That'd be, well, that would be amazing. well, I know there's a couple times some something was supposed to happen, but what's that? You know, so many people involved and shit gets in the way and you know that one person can't do it or they can and it's like what the fuck I've been waiting a long time you know, the album came out they haven't done a show yet this is back in like August which is understandable they got things going on Enzo play a fucking show <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying what else we gotta talk about what else um, you know my sloppy ass writing I don't know dude I'm fucking I wrote so much shit. We talked about a whole bunch. Um, is there anything you're looking forward to in uh, hardcore? Is there anything you wish would uh, wish would change or go in a different direction? Or are you happy with the state after seeing the past fucking I, I 35 think, years of shows? I don't think, yeah. It's in a good place. I don't. I don't think that you know. I think also coming off uh, COVID, you know. I, I mean, I, I'm going to tell you this much. You know, for this old man, um, that 10 for 10 show was like big. That was like just a big, a big ray of hope. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah. And and to see, you know, I was so grateful. You know that uh, Max and the Sanctuary, you know, survived all of that. And uh, you know that that ten for ten show was just like a really big, you know, boost. You know, <laughs> to see that place sold out, packed, and just you it was know, all pretty much local bands. And, and you it know, gave me, it gave me a little, it gave me some, you know, it, stuff like that. Yeah, it's gonna, it, you know, it's gonna give you some hope. You know, I think. Um, it was uh, that summer show, that benefit show. That um, there was like these little things that kept me going, like the the uh, suicide machine show at the uh, at Trumbleplex. The, no, no, it was at the um, the majestic, not the cafe, but the the uh, bowling, the garden bowl. Oh yeah, when I did the benefit for the food pantry, you know, like that show, and um, then there was a show at the New Dodge. That I went to, so there was like these little shows that I went to, mm-hmm. you know, just to kind of kind of keep me going because music is such a, a huge part of my life that without it, you know, um, I don't know, I can just kind of kind of invert, you know. What I mean? Sure. And it, and it's being at the shows, it's being a part of the culture, it's being a part of you know the bands and, and supporting hardcore, you know, and that was one of my big things. That was like the run of joke, like even the hardcore care shows. I would always I would always tell people, you know. 
you know, I have a hand stamp too because I fucking paid. <laughs> yeah. It's my show when I'm paying. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't ever, it's like I tell people, you know, if, if somebody offers it to me, I, you know what, it's like people used to tell me, you know, it makes you feel good to do things for other people. And I'm like, yeah, it, it, you know, it does. And I learned how to do that properly, mm-hmm. you know, to, to have like a, a, a healthy, you know, feeling about it instead of like, you know, patting myself on the fucking back all the time. But, you know, then sometimes people will put me on the list. Like, you know, oh, you're on the list. Don't worry. Just come shoot the show. And so I'm grateful. But, <clears throat> you know, instead of that, you know, telling them, oh, no, 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 no. You know, it's like give them the opportunity to feel that way, too. Sure. You know, yeah. but nine times out of ten, yeah, it's like I, I I, don't care. It's like how much is this out here? Yeah, an extra 10 or 15 <clears throat> can, you know, you know because, really exactly. really help out somebody. Get an extra fucking 100 rarely, miles down the rarely, road. Really, you know, do I not, do I not pay? Cool, man. So, and I know in the beginning when you started talking about the hardcore care show, this one coming up, you you had mentioned. I think I could be wrong. Is there going to be sort of like like raffles or anything like that? I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try and get some some things donated. Okay. To try and, uh, some baskets and shit. Yeah. Put some baskets together and, and, and stuff like that. I'm not gonna be able to do the t-shirts. Fuck! I can't believe how fucking expensive shit is. Man. Yeah, man. It's... I mean, I was gonna do thirty. I was gonna do a run of thirty shirts. It was gonna cost me like four hundred seventy five bucks, and I'm just like, I don't. I don't have that startup cash right now. So. Sure, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, um, so, shit ain't cheap anymore. No, no matter yeah, what the fuck not, it is. Fucking, I mean, a bottle, I sucks. got like a thing of bleach today. It was like nine dollars. I'm like, <laughs> it was the off brand. I'm like, this shit used to be like a dollar ninety. Yeah, you bought <laughs> eggs. <laughs> exactly. Four dollars. Yeah. yeah. Uh, before this, I went and got my kids fucking you know burger and fry from McDonald's, and I was just looking at the menu. I was like, it's like fucking nine dollars for a Big Mac meal. Yeah. Yeah. It's like fuck you. I mean, yeah. leftovers from yesterday. It's like, it's like twelve dollars <laughs> for McDonald's breakfast. <laughs> it's insane. Well, yeah, thirty. Two dollars for a fucking family of four, you know, to get you know McDonald's breakfast. It's, and it's like going to a diner. Like, I have better like food. The the money I made in 2021, I made more money in 2022, but lived better in 2021. Sure, yeah, yeah. I. I a I lot like, of people. Are I like looked it. at how much money I made last year. I'm like, why am I still eating Ooh. fucking Peter Brown? Jelly? Where'd it go? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, for fucking eggs. Oh, shit, excuse me. Fuck. So no, I, I'm. I'm there's none. I mean, there's yeah. None. I, I, I really think things are change. The only thing I'd like to see is just more. I guess a little bit more. Um, you know, understanding and 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 uh, unity at shows as mm-hmm. far as like th- throughout the different, um, you know, age groups. Sure. You know, that's about it. You know, more people supporting each other. You know, like I go to you know I go to the like ten for ten. It was you know the younger guys. I'm like I don't give a fuck. It's hardcore to me. That that's my that's my frame of mind i'm going to a hardcore show yeah not, i'm going to see these little fucking young punks you know, <laughs> yeah they don't have any fucking respect you know yeah well, well, well uh, part, part of the respect is balancing it you know they're not who i am they didn't come up the way i did and i it's to me it's ridiculous to expect them to be like me or to be like you know it was back in like 1987 yeah yeah some people are you know, stuck in the past but, and you know i think there are certain things too you know that are their age is some timeless like i think it's i think it's really disrespectful when somebody puts you on a show and you don't even stick around to see their fucking band like if you're one of the bands on the show and you don't stick around to see all the bands i think that's fucking disrespectful yeah yeah and yeah that'd be kind of rude. like but you know and that's like what i call the emergencies like there's acts like uh i know um uh, Ral from Death and Custody, they were famous for like you know doing shows on their lunch breaks. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? So it was like they would come do the show and then have to go back to work. Sure. Shit like that, I understand. But when yeah. you're just like, oh, I'm gonna go home and fucking watch Netflix or whatever. And yeah. It's yeah. Like, it, it, if at all possible, stick around and support the bands that you're on the show with. Sure, that's super cool, man. So whatever we we talked about a lot of shit and uh, you know got a little bit of history about you. You've been around doing this shit a long time, and it was all. It's all, I'll kind of help ramp up the show coming up, the Hardcore Cares benefit, and that's I'm, I'm that's important to you. It's important to a lot of people. And I'm definitely excited about it. Yeah, I'm, and that, that's I'm looking I mean. forward that's to what it. I love is you know seeing, you know how many people it's reaching. You know. Yeah, it, hopefully you know it's not hard to sell out parts and labor, you know. So hopefully I can do that. Yeah. I think that'll happen for sure. I'm, I have a good feeling it's going to be so. a fucking popping show. Yeah, you know, and I know you know we judge that too based on you know. People will be there, you know, the people coming will be there for, you know, different, 
you always have like the, this rotation of people coming and, and leaving. Yeah. Know, so. Yeah. Well, I can say uh, hardcore is thriving for this year. Yeah. And, uh, I'm happy. I'm, yeah. I'm I'm super happy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's good to look at and see. And um, other than that, uh, we'll see you at shows. Fucking taking pictures and hanging out and yeah. being sober. <laughs> <laughs> So, other than that, thanks again, and um, I'm going to post, hopefully I can have it up by tomorrow morning, to be honest. Be it's awesome. it's pretty simple. It's got to slap a little intro on the front, and off it goes into yeah. the universe, man. I'm going to get a selfie, since okay. we don't have video. Because <laughs> that's just what photographers do. Yeah. Oh, you're on the outside. Oh, yeah. Hmm? I'm going to get my big fat head in there. Cool. All right. End it. Oh. No, I loved it. That